school. So what year did you get it, Wayne? About, I'm guessing a little bit, but I would say about 1971 or two, somewhere in there. And did you know about it for a long time? Or? Yeah, I, I seen this old fella play that at Fiddler's Convention wow. everywhere. You know, you know, they're the local ones around home. And uh, I used to have go look at it, but this old man was a pretty rough customer. He'd been a moonshiner and and uh, and had uh, you know lived way back in the sticks up there. And, and I finally at a fiddler's convention one night got up enough nerve to ask him to let me see it. And because uh, there you know, there's not many of these things around. No. And that's the only one I ever saw. You know. And. Uh, and I know it was a real one, or that, that old man wouldn't have had it there. And oh, yeah. Almost before people was making fakes and stuff, you know. And, uh, and he'd, uh, I asked him if he could see it. He said, yeah, sure, you can see it here. I'm about to trade this guy for one of RB100. And this thing was so heavy, he was getting tired of carrying it. And he was attracted to the RB100 because it's, it's way lighter. You know, didn't oh, yeah. Have ring in. Right. And I told him, well, Lord, if uh, you know you're, uh, if you're thinking about trading it, I've got a master time at home. I would trade it for it. He said, well, I'd like to see it. I didn't have it with me. You know, he told me to meet him at a Vaughn store over at Freeze, Virginia, the next day, Sunday. Sunday. I told him, I'll bring it so you can look at it. And uh, I got it. I brought a drove there, and sure enough, he was sitting right there in the parking lot where he said he'd be, and I didn't know what to do. He, but the first thing he said when he looked at banjo, he said, I like this banjo. He said, if you want to swap, I'll swap with you. <laughs> I thought, well, mm -hmm. I'll swap. And then he said, let's go up. He didn't bring this one. And I said, let's go up to the house and get it. He was all anxious. And I while on the way driving up there, he's a half mile up to his house. And the, we got in his car and drove up there. I was going to look at this one in the daylight, you know, and everything. <laughs> and after a while, he, he, you can tell he got to thinking. He said, well, i tell you what. He, you know, to start with, he's going to swap in. He said, I'll, I'll swap with you, but I want $150 to do. And, and I said, well, that's all right. I, I told him I don't have $150, though. So I'll have to, uh, you know, go to the bank and get it or somehow, you know. Then I got to thinking, you know, you'd swap for RB100, you know, I might find one, I don't know. But, uh, but anyway, he, uh, when, when uh, I went back home, and that is, that is on Sunday, and I had to wait till Monday, the bank up, and I'd go in there and get $150. And I called George, you know, I used to work for George Gruen in really? Nashville and, at that time. And I'd go down there and work for two or three weeks, and then I'd go back home and then go back down there a while. And uh, I went down there and went home and called George. He liked to have an absolute fit. He said he'll back out. Give, why didn't you give him the money? I said, I didn't have a money. I didn't have $150. <laughs> he just had a fit. He said, you get it and you go there right now. That's 10 o'clock at night. And I said, that old man lives in the middle of a pine ticket on top of the mountain. He'll shoot my ass. <laughs> like and he, and he would have. I mean, he was that kind of character. And I said, he won't back out, he wants that banjo. And uh, George said, I know he's going to back out. <laughs> and uh, so, so he had, uh, but I did, I went to the bank and got $150 and went over there the next day. He's just happy as he could be. And, uh, and, and he had, uh, he, you know, traded and I, I went over the next time I went to Nashville, uh, I, I wanted five hundred dollars for my banjo that I'd made, and uh, and I had to get my hundred and fifty dollars back, and I charged George fifty dollars because I went to Nashville out of turn, you know, more. You know, oh yeah. Quicker than I normally would, you know. Yeah. And I charged him fifty dollars for driving to Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> so that's seven hundred dollars what I charged. And what did he turn around and sell it for? Do you know? I think seventeen. Oh wow. And right right away. He sold it to somebody for seventeen. The original as it could be, and yeah. one of the best sounding ones. And, and, well, actually, I talked to the guy's daughter around, that Earl Smith. He's the one who bought it brand new. It come from Porter Furniture Company in Galax. Oh, okay. That was, that was the only place you could get a Martin or Gibson, and it was a furniture company. They, uh, 
would occasionally would have a Gibson hanging on the wall or a Martin, very rarely. And uh, and it was expensive, and people around there couldn't afford stuff like that, and they would hang there forever, so they didn't get many of them. Well, not what happened. He, he was a good player. He yeah. played and picked in bands and stuff, and he he couldn't pay for it. It went back. He, he bought it at Porter Furniture and making payments on it, and gave up or something or other, and it went back to Porter wow. Furniture Company, and the Stuart Carrico bought it. And that's who you got it from? That's who I got it Oh, so Stuart had it for a long time. He had it forever. Yeah. I saw that banjo for years. Oh. And, uh, and I got it, like I say, early 70s yeah. sometime there. And, uh, and, I, and I always kept it. I mean, I always sort of kept it, you know, because it's the only actual flathead one I ever had.